this is Sarah, this is the Chin Mommy, and I'm here for another full update. It is May 11th, uh, Thursday morning, and I have lots to show you, and I had several questions and comments um, in the past few videos, so hopefully I'll um, have a chance to address a few of those things as well. Um, if you ever have a question uh, from, that you'd like me to answer, feel free to ask, and I'll try to answer you in the comments or in a video um, and maybe even make a new video uh, just for answering the question if it needs to be. And I just wanted to share just how excited and welcomed I feel in this floss tube community because especially the past month or so it seems like I've heard other floss tubers mentioned me or I've just had more conversations back and forth with people in the comments and it's just been really fun to feel like a part of a group especially when um, there's not as many stitchers in real life for a lot of us so that we can talk to and bounce things off and share all of the minutia of our projects that other people don't really care about even other crafters don't necessarily get the same joy out of craft cross stitch details as other cross stitchers do so it's just been fun to be part of this group and feel so welcomed um i was i watched the evergreen needles last or last update video i saw i don't know if she's made another one since then but where she commented how she doesn't generally do shout outs because it's just, I don't know, for me it doesn't seem, it, it seems a little forced, um, and I, I like to be, um, bring up other people as it flows in a normal relationship. If I have an interaction with somebody that I feel applies to, you know, in my videos that I can address it or mention it, you know, I'll bring it up and kind of as a normal relationship would be. So I kind of, uh, agree with her thoughts on, on not necessarily doing shout outs just for the sake of shout outs but if i mention people um as their floss tubers i i will do it in a context of something we were talking about that i thought applied to something else that i'm talking about in my video so um for example along with feeling a part of the community i um have been interacting with bendy stitchy uh, michelle garrett and she's starting her first Haid, and it was fun to hear that some of the things I'm doing, she's trying. Um, she's going to try 28 count, 2 over 1 half stitch on hers. She has her pattern in like a little report cover like I have one of my patterns in. So it's just kind of fun to see how I can have um, some of the, the like things I'm doing can help somebody else or if you see somebody else doing something that you hadn't thought of, you know, it, you can share your experience, whether that's good or bad with other people, even though they're not sitting here in the living room with you, because we kind of are inviting each other into each other's living rooms as we're sharing the love of cross stitch. So, um, that's just been fun. Anyways, um, one of the questions I received a couple videos back was, do I work from a master set of DMC or, and if I do, do I have dye lot issues? And I do, I do work from a master set of DMC. I have my big double-sided box um, that fits all the colors in it. One, at least one of every color. If it's on a bobbin, it's in there. So some of the colors have multiple bobbins. Um, I do have one travel box that doesn't, not necessarily um, separate colors. So sometimes if I'm in a pattern and I'll go to my master set, it won't be there. It's probably because it's in my travel box. Some of those colors are duplicated in both boxes. Some of them are not. Um, dye lot issues generally, it doesn't, hasn't affected me. And I know a lot of my projects are enormous. That's just how I roll. <laughs> and I know a lot of them probably call for multiple skeins of things and I I don't go buy anything when I start a Heaven and Earth design or when I start a Golden Kite. I don't ever buy, I just have fabric and pattern and, and I'm ready to and needle and ready to go. 
I have, um, if I need a new color, I'll go get it. Generally, the, I've had two, prob two times in my stitchy career where a dye lot issue was a problem and that be was because I had a large, a large chunk of the pattern was all the same color and I changed to a different skein and it, it didn't match. And one was on Mother's Bliss on her apron, I think it was. No, her apron was clear. It was her dress. The dr on the dress, the and I think I might have had to rip that out and redo it. Rip out what I had had so that it would match. On another one I had was my second son's Snoopy car birth sampler. that had um, a red car and the red ran out and a new red was the wrong color. But I just made it so that one, it had lines. So I had like the door was one shade and like the bumper was like the other shade. So they weren't touching so it wasn't quite as noticeable and I just had to be careful of where I started and stopped the different skeins. But other than that, it doesn't bother me if they're slightly different because most of the time they're not touching and they're not going to be in a in a circumstance where it's going to really matter that much. So so far it hasn't bothered me. If if you're worried about it, feel free to buy lots of something when you start a project, but I couldn't be bothered with <laughs> buying kidding up project by project. I have too many projects and too many of them are large. So that's just how I do it and it works for me. And I, it doesn't, I doesn't bother me. Um, and I don't worry about it. So life's too short to worry about dye lot issues. <laughs> I do have a plan in the future to maybe do like a walkthrough of my floss stash, flosses and beads and how I organize projects and things. So, um, I'll do that. I'll show you in another video. Um, another question I had was where do I get my fabric? A lot of floss tubers have fancy fabric from Picture This Plus or hand dyed fabrics by Stephanie and I've heard all these different a variety of places the dye fabric and it's all lovely. I've never bought from any of those places and I think the main reason is because I'm cheap <laughs> and I just haven't I noticed Bendy Stitchy has gotten some stuff like that on eBay so I might have to look into that because it does look like it might be kind of fun to try some of those fabrics. Um, so far I haven't gone that route. Most of the time I've gotten my fabrics at Joann's or Michael's or Hobby Lobby with a coupon because I'm cheap. And I've made it work even if it's uneven, even uneven, even weave. I've made it work and I've done Mirabilia's on MCG Textiles Linen. Um, and I'm okay with that and they've turned out beautiful and I have recently bought a, I got a large um, yard of like a supposedly it was a bad run on some fabric or something that had issues with the dye or Something was supposed to be wrong with it on eBay and I got a whole yard of it and I should have bought more because it was great. And it was that rose 28 count. I'm starting a couple projects on it that you'll see today. And I didn't notice any problems. I didn't notice any dye issues. I didn't notice any blips in the fabric. And I'm doing plenty to, to really do uh, full coverage on that. So it really doesn't matter if the dye is botchy anyways. So... I have gotten that piece on eBay. I did get eBay and Amazon. I was getting some linen, MCG Textiles linen for Nantucket Rose, trying to find the right color again. I, so I have done that. But for the most part, oh yes, 123 Stitch. I've bought a few things on 123 Stitch if I can't find it. Um, my number one source for, if I can't find it in the, the craft stores, I'll go to Needlework Plus. Dot com and I'll link that below. It's a kind of a small, um, it seems like it might be run out of someone's home, small website. She's got really reasonable prices for the states and 
So if mainly just solid colors and just a few solid colors, so a small selection. If I can't find it in the craft store, I'll look on Needlework Plus. If I can't find it there, I'll go to 123 Stitch. And if I feel like it's too expensive in any of those situations, I'll check eBay just because, but that's kind of a newer thing. I haven't done that as much. So that's kind of what I do where I find my fabric. Um, I don't generally tell you where I find it because most of the time it's not a fancy brand, so that's why I don't usually say where I got it. Some some of my projects are old enough I don't remember where I got it and I don't have it written down. <laughs> so there's that. Um, but as always, I don't know if any of you have noticed, in my description box I always link at least a link to the pattern where you can find it if it's still available and any supplies that I show are all linked below and I can also link um, if I have people that I comment like other floss tubers I comment on, about or their videos that I'm referencing I'll, I'll link those below too so if you ever have a question you can check down there and if you still don't see it then you can ask me feel free to ask me all right I have another couple things that um, I was asked un there was one lady who wanted to know how to unpick cross stitch how to frog what she's already done she was having trouble figuring that out and I looked for a video a YouTube video to, to reference her to because I didn't have a chance to film right away but I couldn't find one so I think my plan for my next um, tutorial update is how to take out stitches. And I actually have a couple projects coming up in June where I'll be restarting projects, so I'll have stitches that need to get taken out. So um, I'll probably use those to help demonstrate how I go about unpicking stitches, and it might be different than somebody else, but I'd rather there be a video on unpicking stitches with the potential of more than nothing for people who are really curious about how to do it without ruining their fabric. And I've also had questions in my Etsy shop of the past month or two of people that have done stamped cross stitch ages ago, decades ago, and now have seen my patterns and want to stitch them, but they don't know what counted cross stitch is and how to how to do it, how what it what it looks like, what how do you get your pattern onto your fabric and just the concept of that because all they've done in the past was stamped cross stitch so I think another video that I'll do soon maybe next month will be the differences between stamped cross stitch and counted cross stitch and how to how that process works of looking at your pattern and looking at, at your fabric and figuring that out for people who haven't even started to cross stitch yet for counted cross stitch people who need to know like that first basic understanding of what it is so I'll go and do that maybe in June just unless something else comes up but those were the two like tutorial videos I was thinking will be coming soon but I've got I've got a list of things I'd like to do so if you have anything you want a video of um, feel free to leave a comment and I'll add it to my list and it'll get done eventually <laughs> all right now to the fun stuff my finishes for, I only have one finish in, in April since the last video, and that was my, just kidding. I didn't have any finishes in April because I finished my Snowflower Diaries on May 2nd. So I did not finish it in April, but it is finished now. And I realized when I, after I finished my last video that I didn't tell you any of the changes that I made to my April block that I finished in March. Um, I think I was rushing through that video and just kind of forgot to tell details. I finished April in March and most of a lot of like this is fragrant cloves from Gast. This is apple cider maybe. These are like the called for greens, shutter green or whatever they are. This top row is Liberty. So all pretty much everything was the same except for these flowers. Flower these pink flowers were the called for DMC. This purple they called for 
a ghast color that I didn't have because I think this is the only place it showed up and I didn't think it was worth it. But it was the replacement DMC was a blend and I'm stitching one over one so I don't I can't really do a blend and I didn't want to do like one leg of the stitch one color one leg of the stitch another color that'd be just too crazy so what I did because these pink flowers had a light light pink big flowers and dark pink little flowers I did that over here too the lighter purple they request they suggested was the big flowers and the <coughs> The darker purple they requ they suggested for the blend w did all these little little flowers. So if you're thinking of doing the DMC conversion of these and don't know what to do with that, this is what it looks like. If you choose to do the blended color with big and little like that, that's how I chose to do it. And I and these ended up being the lighter purple of the blend because the darker purple kind of blended in with the brown too much. It didn't show up. So I used the lighter shade in these corners. So there's that. And I finished May on May 2nd. So here this is, which cute little kitties. And this I believe is all as charted the centers the yellow centers of these flowers and those flowers is the daffodil color which I think is in a lot of these months but they're only like two one or two spaces at a time because they're always just the centers of the flowers so I didn't get that color and I think when I even saw it in my LNS it was not a whole lot of variegation anyways, so I didn't bother with wasting my money on that. So that is the DMC equivalent. But this is the pretty, you know, ruby slipper color, which was really fun to use. And bittersweet is the lighter, light orange color. A lot of fun. Got that one done. And that's a nice segue into my whips because my... I have a nice start on June that I got done this past weekend. Um, I got the bear all done. I was a little worried about this one because April, uh, May took me so long in April to finish that I barely finished it and um, I just had a rough time. A lot was going on in April, a lot, not a lot of stitching time. and. So I was kind of nervous about the bear being so big, so much stitching, to be able to uh, complete it in time. But I ended up having a lot of stitching time this uh, this weekend. So I got the bear busted out, and I even did the little bees with their la lazy daisy wings and the beehive, which will be standing on a little little table in the future, the start of a tree. So that's a really nice start for me um, for that one. So that will be, again, my weekend project. Last time, um, I had to go back and watch my old video because I couldn't remember what I'd done. <laughs> my plans have changed for Mania. It'd been a long time. A lot happened in real life in between this video and my last update, real update video. So I had to go back and what was I working on? What, were, what was I planning to do? And it's different than what I, what I did is different than what I planned. The first thing I said I was going to do is finish the column on the nativity, which is this one. And I'm working here in the palm tree and I was working on that for April architecture. And I did, I did finish that column. So I'll show you that. Let's see. Oh yeah, here's where it was last time. And here it is now, with all of this filled in now. And you can see, there's a little bit of brown down here that's the start of the trunk. I think the trunk is like at an angle 
and this is where that is. So the next column will have some a good amount of trunk in it. But I got all the sky finished up and not sure if it's good with the sun or without the sun. So that's been fun. Like I said before, it's fun to see the uh, palm tree come to life as I as I go. And I had said after that I was going to pull back out a stitching shelf and finish the column on that. But I didn't. Um, I think for some reason I, I just didn't have as much stitching time in April. And now that I'm thinking about it, I think the problem was I've been trying to do my themed pieces part of the day. And then the rest, the most of the day would be my focus piece. And so the themed pieces didn't get a whole lot of time. So I, I'm going to be changing that going forward into June um, when Stinch Mania is over. So I'll share that later. But by the time I finished that column, it was the 17th and I was ready to start my next project. So I didn't pick up the stitching shelf. I didn't pick up Nantucket Rose. I didn't pick up Triptych, Fantasy Triptych. So none of those that I was thinking of revisiting from previous months got love this month um and i think in the future the way i'm working it i think i'll be happier with my progress on individual pieces because i'll be able to spend more time on each one um they'll just be fewer themed pieces and i'll share that later so let me set this aside because i'll need that one later i didn't do all those ones i said but i did start my make my new start on bodium castle and this one was included in my how do you start a cross stitch video. If you're curious about that, you can go look at it. And in that video, I discovered that this kit, it's, it came with 18 count Ada and it called for one over one on 18 count, which is not how I do 18 count. I prefer two over one on 18 count. And I even tested it with one of the darker grays because my first color I ended up starting with was cream. And one over one in cream isn't going to be that bad. But I tried it with one of the darker grays in the castle and I did not like it. Super thin, so much show through, especially on like antique white Ada. And all of these up here, when I was looking closer at the picture later, I realized, well, that's probably why I was a little bit meh you know on the design itself was because it looked too exy and I like it to be more full and col like full color squares not X's because then it's just too busy so I tested it I did the whole castle with my cream color and let's maybe maybe this will I did the whole castle with this cream and I ran out of kit floss doing the whole castle. I had like this much thread. I was very, very frugal with my thread. There are still a handful of colors down here in the flowers. There's like maybe another dozen stitches down here. But again, similar with the dye lot issues. Um, it's not touching. So I'm going to go ahead and use a DMC equivalent for the anchor floss that came with the kit because I have DMC. I don't have anchor and I don't want to go find it. I don't want to buy it. I, I have all the DMC. So I went online and found a, a DMC anchor conversion. The DMC version of this color is a little bit more yellow. So it would have maybe looked funny in the castle, but if it's down here in the flowers, it's going to look fine. So when I get to the flowers, I'll just, I wrote on my chart the DMC number next to the empty hole of, you know, by the symbol and the color, I put the DMC number. So I'll go pull that color when I'm ready to do the flowers. And then I started in on the next color. And what I'm going to do with this color, this is a very, has a lot more thread than this one did. There's a lot more of the castle in this color and a little bit down here. I'm hoping it'll do the same thing where I can get the whole castle done 
And then any of the ducks and flowers that use that color can be in something else. I'm hoping that'll work again. But what I'm planning to do is do each like tower at a time and just take it as I go so I don't if I have to use a different DMC equivalent in the castle, I want it to be like, like maybe this back part can be a different one because it'd be in the shadow. So if it's slightly different, it wouldn't be a big deal. So something like that. I think I'll do like these main columns first and then go in and do the inside parts um, last in case I need to use some another thread for that. So that's as far as I got um, on Bodium Castle in April. And I didn't get anything else out. That took me most of two weeks worth of, you know, a few, like a half hour, an hour every day to so just a little bit here and there, um, or like one thread a day. I don't think I'll be doing it that way my themed pieces that way in the future, but yeah, I'll show you. It's upside down. So pale cream, there's no more thread, but I wrote the DMC number right there. So this number over here was the anchor number. So that worked out. I'll just do it that way. So that was all of April, April architecture. I just did Nativity and, and Bodium Castle and for my more regular pieces, I, I, you remember maybe on in my last video that I had expressed a desire to finish the freebie You Make My Heart Melt. And I got really close, but I didn't finish it. Um, so here's a picture of where it was last time. And here's where it is now. I finished all of the background, I finished all of the girl, and now I'm working on the boy, Penguin. So, super cute, lots of little tiny stitches, you can see in the sun there. Um, this is now continuing on in, my, in the car for my travel piece, and I can only get like one thread a day in the valet line at school, the pickup line. But it's better than nothing. And during Stitch Mania, I wanted to focus on my starts and getting progress on each of those. Um, so this is in the car now, a little bit at a time, and I'm okay with that. I do want it done soon. So I'm thinking since I got such a good head start on June with a little bear, if I can finish that and I still have weekend time, I might pull this out on the weekend. We'll see. Knowing me, I won't have extra time. <laughs> but, you know, maybe. Still hoping to finish that in the near future, but we'll see how that goes. I don't know. I also worked on my temperature garden. And this is my pattern that I have... There's one more flower I could stitch today, but I haven't yet. So I only have one flower in May finished, but I have all of April is finished and one flower in May. And here's where it was last time. And here's where it is now. It's so cute and colorful. And this new flower in May is Got the darkest colors yet. Those orange petals are 97 and 95. That was last, uh, last Wednesday was the 97, the, the hottest so far this year. And then this Wednesday, a few days ago, yesterday, it rained. <laughs> so it's definitely still spring. So this next flower will, will be a little bit more like these ones over here, I think, where it's going to be a mixture of cool and warm, not hot. So, which I'm happy for. We've had kind of a mild spring, so it's been fun for our area. And I am, in case you're curious, in my pattern, I have three temperature ranges that I include. 
where I include the the uh, and mine is marked up because I didn't reprint it after I fixed some colors but the one that you get on uh, if you buy it is all fixed and pretty but I have three sets of ranges of temperatures that go along with the colors so that if you live in an area where it gets hot and cold the ranges are a little bit more spread out like I think more closer to five degrees per color I have a cold range that is three degrees per color for the most part only it skews cold mine is about three degrees per color and it skews hot so my lowest number is a high of 40 or below and I actually never used that color the lowest color I used in January was I think I think the third one so the bottom two I don't think I even got to but it is possible it has happened so I made sure it went down there but my highest is 110 Fahrenheit or higher and last year on my example it got to that color once. So I'm curious to see how hot it will be this year. So so that was just to know that if you buy this and you can tailor the range of colors to where you live and I gave those three options for you um, just to help you because um, not everybody has the same temperature ranges and you still want to be able to enjoy all the different colors. So. I've even had one person buy this who said they were using it for an emotion garden and she came up with her own emotions for the colors. You know, you can use it for that too. And there's that. So still enjoying this. I find myself want like, you know, figuring out what day it is and like, is it time to do one yet? Surely it's time to do another one. And you know, no, not another, still have another two days or three days and like, really? It feels like it's been longer than that. I want to do another flower. <laughs> so I'm really enjoying that one and I look forward to doing every, a new flower every, you know, five or six days. So it's been a lot of fun. And if you're not doing it now, feel free to join in next year and there are probably going to be other people doing it next year. That was that one, and I'm still working on that every few days, in and amongst everything else. That's just kind of a aside. Okay, so let me get my notes. I have started Stitch Mania, and as you saw from my last short update video, I updated my Stitch Mania plans to be five new starts not monogamous May. If you haven't seen that video, um, I decided not to do monogamous May because the piece I was choosing for monogamous May would be a long stretch of light blue and white that would be rather boring and I didn't want to kill my love for that piece by doing that and only that for an entire month because it's just not me to stick with something that long. So especially if it's boring. And it's, it's pretty, you know, blues and whites. It's not terrible. It's going to look nice, but I didn't want to be stuck with it for an entire month and then grow to resent it or slow down because it was like, do I have to stitch on that again? So I decided not to do that to myself. I still didn't want to start all the things because I already have all the things started. <laughs> But I figured there were a few highlights that I've been wanting to start for a while for full coverage pieces in particular that I've had kitted up for a while and wanted to start. Thought this was a good opportunity. And then in, in addition to those four full coverage pieces, I threw in a Mirabilia just because. Why not? It's never too late or never too many Mirabilias, right? So I started Ashley's Roses. Um, first week of May and I the weekdays so first first week of weekdays and I realized after I filmed this that this is a discontinued chart so I'm sorry for any of you who don't have it and want it because it's really hard to find apparently I found one copy on Amazon for $50 so if you like this one maybe you can stock eBay for a little while and see if you can find it but 
I was gifted this a while, several years ago, probably when it was, you know, not retired. It was still readily accessible along with the fabric and the beads. So I was able to start it and I got, yeah, this is it. A good amount done because this is all I worked on on the weekdays. Um, so I think I like that going forward where I have a whole week all my weekday project is just one project. I'm not gonna try to split my weekday time up other than the temperature garden, which is very intermittent and short. My weekday time, I wanna do a whole week on just one thing. I don't wanna do a themed piece for 20 minutes and then something else. It just, the themed piece gets shortchanged and all of my pieces I love, so I wanna get moving on all of them. So here's this one. I started at the top because um, it had this nice crisp border around the whole thing, which I know Jessie Marie does stuff, doesn't like a single border around her things, but that doesn't bother me. And something I noticed when I got started on it is it's two different colors, a blue and a, <laughs> it's a hangnail that's catching the light. There's a blue and green in the border and I didn't fill in that part yet and I just kind of went until my threads ran out and then started in on the fun part. So this is the top and I got this, these leaves over here and that the rows and these little bits 100% done which is awesome with Mirabilia's because there's not a lot of backstitching, it's not full coverage, so this chunk and actually all the way, all the way to like here is all done. These leaves need some more love and the rest of this swag, you know, it keeps going. There's more color over here. There's more leaves and, but her hand is like, sorry if I'm making you seasick here. I'm so sorry. Her hand is like right here somewhere where she's reaching up to pick the roses. So. I'm excited. So next time I work on this, I'll probably keep going on the top and get um, get the top done and then move down onto her, which will be really fun. But it's been nice. They're like blue-green colors and then these bright pinks and some peaches. A lot of fun. Lots of pretty colors. So that was uh, Ashley's Roses by Mirabilia. And it is number 40, MD40, in case that helps anybody. Her charts have numbers. There was that one. My next Stitch Mania start was Quick Stitch April Fairy from Heaven and Earth Designs which is this one by Hannah Lynn is the designer of all of I saw somebody on Instagram was doing um, doing one of her pieces and I really liked it seemed like it was working up pretty quickly because it's got a more like drawn cartoon types like co coloring book type style not really cartoon but coloring book style where there's black filled in with color so I searched through all of Hannah Lynn's designs and like this one the best so I grabbed that during one of the sales last year <clears throat> and then more recently hold on okay more recently I had been thinking about starting doing a project using diagonal stitching diagonal parking the way blitz stitch has demonstrated where he makes sure the you come up in a hole that has zero or one threads in the hole and you go down in a hole that has two or three stitches already in that hole just to keep it cleaner and neater stitches and in order to do that you kind of have to stitch row by row going down in your diagonals and I was always curious about that method I've tried so many different methods for stitching um, 
because I'm curious about all of them and it's fun. You know, why not? I've got so many projects. I have some projects that I've tried two or three different methods on the same project. It's fine. It's fun. Whatever works. So I have started Quick Stitch, Quick Stitch April Fairy and I am currently working on it. So I will still give this one some attention today and tomorrow. <coughs> Not sure how much time I'll have today because I'm making this video, but and I have to take my kids to the dentist this afternoon. But we'll see. We'll see. This is how far I am now. And my son thought this was, well, one of my sons and my daughter thought this was a bumblebee. And my other son thought it was a tiger. It is neither. <laughs> it is her hair. Because I'm starting in this corner and it's her hair. And I'm actually kind of happy that I'm starting up here because it's probably my least favorite part because it's only those two main color families, black and gold and kind of boring. I like all the other, you know, pinky, bluey, greeny, purpley, you know, everything else that's down here. So it's kind of fun to start with the more boring part and work my way into everything's going to get more fun from there. So... Um, there we go. That's my start. I'm hoping to finish this next diagonal before I have to move on uh, next week. So I'll hopefully can work my way down here at least maybe start over on the next one but at least work my way down here. It does go it does feel like it's going a little bit slower than my other methods have. However, if I make it to the bottom of this row, this di diagonal, cumulatively, that will be the equivalent of one full column on a Heaven and Earth Design chart. Which, when I was doing my themed pieces, in addition to my focus pieces, and I wasn't giving my themed pieces the whole day, but I could get a whole column done in one week on like my Empress Eugenie. Although her column was shorter. But I'm thinking a whole column worth of stitching in one week on something that's full cross and um, a more particular method I think is really good actually. So it's been fun. Like I know even though it's slower it feels more caring. Like I'm being more purposeful and it, like more of a more thoughtful in how I stitch like it's not about finish it's about the beauty in the stitches and the beauty in the project and the process <clears throat> and so it's been kind of fun to slow down and just kind of take it one stitch at a time I don't know it's been fun and I'm and it's not like it's not getting progress it's still making progress so I don't think I would stitch a stitching shelf a stitch in time I would not stitch something like that on it with this method because I think it would slow me down so much with changing changing my needle the thread on my needle every single stitch I think that would drive me bananas so something with that much confetti I I don't know that I would recommend this method unless you're just willing to be patient and plug away at it one stitch at a time but for, for this piece where it's, um, there's blocks of confetti and chunks of confetti and chunks of solid color, it kind of mixes it up just enough that it keeps me moving and not bogged down in any of the confetti. Um, so even though there's a few lines that are slower because I'm changing my needle a lot, there's some lines that just whiz through. So um, it's kind of a happy medium and so far I'm liking it. So I do hope to eventually have a video showing how I do the diagonal stitching because it's blitz stitch kind of shared his method a stitch too far altered it a little bit because she stitches in a di different direction than he does and I stitch in yet a different direction so I think it could be helpful to have the different varieties so that if somebody um, stitches in the direction that I do that they might it might click 
in their head if they see me doing it that way because I know it's kind of an abstract concept to figure out well which way do you need to, to go if you stitch this way and which corner do you start in and it can kind of make your head hurt if, you, if you're not like trying to wrap your head around the concept so I think I'll do a video in the future for um, demonstrating um, how I do it in with the stitching method stitching direction that I use because I it, it helped me to see both of their demonstration videos because it kind of helped me wrap my head around the concept to see it coming from different directions so I think if there's even one more direction it, it could help um, rather I mean can't hurt so that's in the works down the line I will do a start next week and I'm planning to do Flower Garden by uh, Emil, em Emil, or Emily, I don't know, Vernon. And I'll do this one two over one half stitch on 28 count. Probably up in here. Good amount of confetti, I think, will be at the beginning of that. So I'm hoping because I'm going to focus on that for the whole week and not have any other projects pulling away my time that I can still finish a column or more. Um, so we'll see how that goes. The following week, I will do La Soiree by Golden Kite. Again, two over one half stitch. This one will be on 24 count Congress cloth, which I showed in my uh, Mania update video. And I was going to do four days each for the last two because there's just not enough days in May to do full, full five days on five starts. But I noticed June has four full weeks um, in the weekdays and then two, you know, the two remaining days, June, maybe three. No, two. Thursday and Friday, June 1st and 2nd are kind of all by themselves. And since I'm kind of hoping to do a whole week on a project now in between the weekends. I've got my weekend Snowflower Diaries project, so it's kind of a natural break anyway. So if I can hold the end cap, you know, just a week and work on something in that week, I think that's kind of a nice chunk for me. So what I decided to do just this morning, I'm going to do La Soiree the whole second to last week of May all the way through that Friday. And then the last week of May... I'll work on Norwegian Ship Under Sail, also by Golden Kite, all the way through June June 2nd. <clears throat> so it'll get a full five days also. So I'll start this that last week of May all the way through the 2nd of June. And then the four full week weeks of June will be, you know, s some other June stuff. So this will be my last start of Stitch Mania. Also, two over one half stitch. This one will be on 25 count just because that's what I bought <laughs> at the time. And to, before I realized I kind of preferred 28 count with the half stitch, it still looks good. And I was still going to use my fabric. Um, I have another Golden Kite two over one half stitch on 25 count. And the top of that one is very dark. And it is a little bit see-through, but when you stand back and look at it when it's done you're not going to notice it or care so i don't care so i'm going to enjoy these two new starts also for stitch mania and then um yes so going forward into june since the last two videos i haven't recorded until 10 11 days into the month in case I, that happens again in june i'll go ahead and share my current plans for June in case I have to just get started. Um, and if they change, it's not a big deal, but um, then I can kind of share that with you ahead of time and just in case. My plans are now to bring back Waterfall in Yosemite now that Stitch Mania, once Stitch Mania will be over because it's not over yet. I do want to make progress on this because it has a planned location in our home. So because I like the progress I've been making on things that where they have 
an entire week and it's not chopped up between multiple projects during the day. Um, I'm going to take a page from Pam Reed of Pam's Crafty Corner. She's a floss tuber. And she's she's working on a Record Girls project that she's trying to finish. And she'll do a, work, a week on Record Girls and then a week on one of her other projects. And then a week on Record Girls and a week on another project. And I think I'm going to try that for a little while, at least in June, and see how it goes. So as soon as Stitch Mania projects are over, I'm going to come back to this and do a, a whole week on this. And then I'll switch to a June themed piece for Stitch Mania and stitch a whole week on that. Then come back and stitch a whole week on this again. And then a second themed piece for the June Stitch Mania. And that'll be the four, week, four weeks in June. So that's the plan. So that first week in June, uh, at once Stitch Mania is over, I'll head back to this one. And hopefully I'll film a video at that point and you won't need to see these next plans, but I'm going to share them with you anyways because I have them picked out already. So I'll just show you. Um, I haven't made any progress on Waterfall and Yosemite since the last time, so I won't show that. Um, my themed pieces for June, June's theme for Stitch Mania is Wine and Whips. W-H-I-N-E. So if you work on a project that makes you wine. And I have two projects that I was planning to restart because there was something I wanted to change or something that was wrong. Frogging is not fun. It's going to make you wine. So I'm going to choose those two projects. The first one is a Stitcher's Retreat. And I like this picture. It's Last I checked, it was still free on the Heaven and Earth Designs website, so if you like it, feel free to go download it now before it gets taken down. The problem with it, it is, is it is ginormous, especially for a freebie. It is huge, huge. And I started this, I have a whole page done. My plan is to do this page, this is my experimental piece for extreme Cross country. Like I said, I like to experiment with all the different varieties of stitching and Hap Addict, I believe she has she has some floss tube videos out now as well. I know her on Instagram. She does large like movie posters turned into cross stitch stitches, extreme cross country, whereas one color over the entire piece, not just one page, but the entire piece before moving on to the next color kind of a thrilling idea so I thought I should try that too and I chose this pattern to try it I have a whole page in a little bit of with one color finished as I was gonna do the whole thing that way and then decided that was just too much like the piece itself was too big to do that and so there's a lot of excess gunk around the outside that I don't care about so I decided to crop it I'm taking off two, two rows of pages on the top, two rows of pages on the bottom, a row of pages on this side, and a row and a partial page on this side. So that this will be my finished piece with just the two ladies stitching. It will change it from portrait to landscape orientation. And I think I will be happier with the time it will take me to do that. So because I'm a cheapskate, as I have mentioned. I've already worked up here, but I'm now, this is now going to be my top corner. So I want to reuse my fabric, so I'm going to frog everything that I did up here and restart it with my new cropped pattern and in the new cropped area. So this is how far I got last time with I think 3371 maybe dark brown and I think this is like the start of the next page down here so this is pretty much one page of one color <coughs> two over one half stitches and um, on 28 count this is part of that yard of pink fabric I got on eBay <laughs> this is going to be ripped out and restarted for wine and whips 
So I'm hoping that frogging doesn't take that long and I can actually get some more stitching, some new stitching on this in that um, second week of June. So that's the goal to get that unpicked and restarted. Then I'll go back to Waterfall in Yosemite for a second week and then I will do another restart. This is Quick Stick, Quick Stitch Iris by Josephine Wall. This is my very first heaven and earth design pattern that I bought like, I don't even know, she still lived in Minnesota. So it's been a long time. I don't even know, it, it might be on my 2006. 2006. So it's been almost 10 years or over 10 years, 11 years. It's been 11 years. So this is my first heaven and earth design pattern that I bought. I'm planning to stitch it for a family member <clears throat> who likes irises and they recommend stitching it two over one full crosses on 25 count fabric. So that's what I did because I didn't know any better. And this is how far I got. And I was doing kind of cross country. The stitches are really tight. And I kind of got burnt out on this. Um, and I never really knew why. I never really wanted to work on it and kind of just gave up and moved on to other things and never really knew why. And I think now I know why is because it was too tight and it was bugging me and um, I just didn't like working on it. So what I think, what I am going to do, this is, is still perfectly cut for this piece. So I am going to frog this as well and restart it one over one on 25 count. Cause I have heard so many of you guys love one over one on 25 count for your heaven and earth designs. I haven't actually tried that before. The only thing I've tried on 25 count is two over one half stitch, which is okay, but I prefer 28 for that one. So I like 28 one over one. So I'm curious what I'll, uh, how I'll like 25 one over one and how to compare that in my own head. So that's what I'm going to do because I already have the fabric cut ready to go for this. So I'm going to frog this and then restart it with one over one full crosses. The plan is to do it normal columns and whatnot, but I may actually do diagonal parking on this one too because it's been so much fun and it'll be one over one full cross. So we'll see when I get there after I frog it all, if I still have time to stitch, which hopefully I will that last week in June. Um, we'll see what I decide about restarting it, what I, what I choose to do. So that's that one. In case, in case something happens and I don't get to a video in the beginning of June, you know what I'm going to be doing. Um, I was also going to talk a little bit about the differences between Heaven and Earth designs and gold, uh, Golden Kite. Because as you know, I do both. And I have done lots of different, I, I think I have at least six, six, sixteen, sixteen. Full coverage projects started. Some of them are large, large, large projects. And I know I am crazy and they will not all get finished in my lifetime, but that doesn't stop me from starting more. It's just fun. Life's too short to not start all the things, right? <laughs> so anyways, the main differences I've noticed between Golden Kite and Heaven and Earth Golden kite patterns are charted from artwork that is from artists who are no longer living, as far as I could tell. I don't believe they're doing any current licensing issues with current artists. Heaven and Earth Designs uses current alive artists and they pay licensing fees to their artists. So that's the main difference of why the chart style is different, because these are older artists. Um, some are photographs and some are artwork. These are all, you know, currently living artists. 
The other big difference is Golden Kite, most of their patterns include blended threads where there's two colors in the same needle. Heaven and Earth Designs does not do that. Something else I've noticed is um, Heaven and Earth Designs, their standard size that they like to make a lot of their patterns is larger than their Golden Kite standard size. So their standard size is smaller. <clears throat> but because they use blended threads, I think that's how they get the detail to come out in a smaller size. The other thing I've noticed is Golden Kite's pattern pages have a larger font in general than Heaven and Earth Designs. Even their large format is smaller than, Heaven and Earth, than Golden Kite's regular format. So if you have a hard time viewing these charts, Heaven and Earth's charts, Golden Kite will be easier to view because they're, they're, just, they're blown up more. Um, other than that, it's not that different because they're both full coverage large pieces. But those are some of the things I've noticed. If you have more questions about that, feel free to ask me and I will address it in another video. Um, hopefully that was clear as mud. I think that's everything I had to say. So I hope you have a wonderful May Stitch Mania. Enjoy all the starts or watching other people make all the starts. And happy stitching. Talk to you later.